Ooh, it's the Bowser theme music this time. I guess we're not going right to Peach. Oh, there he is right now. The great Koopa King himself just barging in like he owns the place. <laughs> Hello! How are you feeling, princess? Nothing makes me happier than a smile from you, from you Peach. <laughs> well, tough luck. I'm in a very bad mood, you monster. You've imprisoned all of the guests from the castle. You are the single greatest disaster to ever befall the Mushroom Kingdom. Ow! That hurts, Peach. I'll tell you what. I'll smile when you make everything as it was before you showed up. Wow, somebody's a little sassy today. <laughs> oh, that's rich. You know, I can't do that. That jerk Mario just beat the Koopa Bros and Toot and Koopa. Sure, they were complete wimps, but they were still loyal to me. I can't forgive Mario for disrespecting me, yo. Yeah. I'm nipping this in the bud right now. I'm gonna use Invincible Tubba Blubba on him. He's the strongest creature I know. After me, of course. <laughs> you best forget about Mario. Uh oh. Man, your nastiness. You have a problem. Why, Kami Koopa? What's got you so riled up? You look upset. <laughs> what? what? The Star Spirit flew away from Tubba Blubba's castle? King Bowser, keep your voice down. Princess Peach will hear you. Hmm, yeah, yeah I guess you're right. Tell me the details over there. And by over there, I mean out of this room, because... We don't want her listening on us, right? That was my idea, not yours. Twink, did you hear that? Yes, I sure did. The star spirit must have escaped. Did you hear him call that tubba blubba thing invincible? That doesn't sound good. Do you think Mario can win? We'd better find out about tubba blubba. If we could find something, anything, about a weak point, it might just save Mario. Good idea! Then, there's no time to lose. We won't get anything done if we stay in this room. Alright, there we go. We are now back in control of our lovely Lady Peach. What's going on, everybody? Metalblade427 here, and I present to you Paper Mario. What a game! In the last episode, we completed Chapter 2. We rescued the Star Spirit. We beat Tootin Koopa. And now here we are in Peach's Castle again, which is above Bowser's Castle, which is actually being held up by Bowser's Castle. And our goal now is to get some information about that tub of blubber thing that Bowser was talking about, which, of course, is going to lead us into our next chapter. So... Let us head over here and push that button. Beep. Can't wait till we get to the point in the game when this whole thing is like not worried about because you have to watch that quickly do that animation and we gotta walk down here. Like I said, this you'll eventually just completely skip. You push the button and then you almost just immediately teleport to right here where we do our little turning thingy. Now you may recognize this room from the last time we were here with Peach. This is where Bowser's diary was. And, of course, he hid it somewhere now, because we don't want any nosy peaches coming around here. Let me put it under the chair. How much you want to bet it's under the cushion? Oh, well, whatever. So, what we have to do now is we have to actually leave this building. No, not the building. We have to leave this room. Careful not to get caught. And let us go into stealth peach mode. Dun, 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 dun. You absolutely do not want to get caught by these guys, because they will just throw you right back into the room where Peach was, and then you will uh, have to redo all this over again. Uh, their line of vision is really just based off of their uh, flashlight, so just kind of walk around them, avoid them, and all that stuff. But we have a few things we need to do before we get our information on Tubba Blubba, and that would be heading this way. Uh, let's see, what do we got? Uh, cards here too, be careful, be extra- Yeah, okay, I know, Twink. So basically what we have to do is we have to hide behind things and sneak our way through the library and not get caught by the Koopa Troopas that are patrolling this area. I don't know why they find the need to patrol a library. It's not like there's really much going on here. I don't even think they can read. But they are here and we must avoid them. The thing of it is, though, is that- I have to wait till this guy goes- We have a special item that we can pick up. Run, 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 there we go. Power Rush Badge. When Mario was in danger, his attack power increases by two. So now, we have a badge. But we're Peach, and it's for Mario. How is this possible? How are we going to give this to him? Well, my fellow follower, viewers, friends, and all that in between and more, I will show you. 
first we gotta let this guy pass us by, and we actually have to go back the way we came. Uh, where is that guy? There he is. Hide behind these bookshelves. They both can't see us here. Make a mad dash this way. I mean, you could get caught. That's another thing that you could do in order to make this go a little faster, but I don't like getting caught. Ooh! Speaking of which, twink! Hi, damn it! I don't want the little guy to see you. Let's get over here, and we actually need to make our way to another room. This is the room where you need to be in in order to know what you're doing in the next chapter. But what I need to do is I need to sneak this way away from everybody. Uh, no, it's not this room. It is this room. I right, open. There we go. So in here, we actually have another badge, Deep Focus. Using Focus, charges Mario or charges, charges Star Energy more than usual. Love this badge. Awesome, awesome badge. Whenever Mario uses Focus, he will regain almost one whole star point or star point of energy or whatever, as long as Deep Focus is attached to him. So this is something you definitely want to get to Mario. And to get everything to Mario, you need to use this thing. Oh, look there. What a beautiful crafted treasure chest. Yes, do you like it? This is the mysterious treasure chest that's been passed down through generations of my family here at the castle. Really? How mysterious and strange and odd. Mysterious treasure chest. Very mysterious. That's right. This chest is connected to another mysterious chest somewhere in the Mushroom Kingdom. This chest has a very mysterious background, apparently. They say you can put things in this chest and take them out of the other chest. Isn't that, well, mysterious? Yeah, yeah, I, I get the point. Everything is mysterious, everything is crazy, yada, yada, yada. So, basically, as Peach was saying, if we open this up and we can put in the badges that we've collected, they will be transported to a chest that looks exactly like this and another part of the Mushroom Kingdom. And you'll actually see exactly what that is in this episode. Uh, I actually showed it before you in a previous episode, but there was nothing we could do with it, so I didn't actually do anything. Uh, just for showing off and whatnot, hopping into this room, it's just like a dining room area. We're going to be back in this room really quickly for something uh, at the end of, I want to say, chapter four. But for right now, let us just mosey, oh, get away, mosey on on back over here, because this is where we need to be. Because we need to do the peach stealth again. What are you looking at, yo? Come on. Uh, ooh, ooh. Dress is showing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, so we're gonna wait till that guy spins around. So this is like completely invisible. This is now visible. Remember that. That's that's the difference between the bookshelves. As long as you can't see Peach, they can't see her either. You know that that whole saying, "I can't see you, so you can't see me." Ha <laughs> ha. All right, let's go this way, and I need to hide back here again. Because he decides he doesn't like looking down these aisles, and right here. Now, there's another item in the upper left corner, a uh, life shroom. I have no idea how to get that thing, but I don't really need it right now. Anywho. Hey, have you heard about Master Tubba Blubba? I heard a rumor that he loves eating ghosts. Ugh, ghosts, huh? Master Tubba Blubba, he lives deep inside of Forever Forest, doesn't he? I think he's guarding one of the star spirits right now. Yeah, Master Tumble Blubba lives in the castle at the top of Gusty Gulch. I heard that somewhere near his castle is a mansion and a village full of ghosts. I guess Master Tumble Blubba sometimes goes there to catch booze. And then, when he catches one, he gobbles him down, starting with its head. Chomp! I mean, isn't a boo nothing but a head? Like, if he bites it, won't it turn into, like, eyes and a mouth? Kind of like the ghost in Pac-Man? Oh man, that's so scary! Now I won't be able to walk to the bathroom alone at night. I'm gonna have nightmares, I know it! Why'd you tell me? Where is the bathroom in this castle anyway? Like, that that is my burning question. Forget about getting there. I just gotta know where the hell I need to go to, you know, go. I also heard that Master Tubba Blubba is invincible. They say he can't be hurt. Nobody even scratched him. Nobody can even scratch him. Whatever, this guy's so excited about it. He might even be stronger than King Bowser! <gasps> Blasphemy! Shut your beak! Stronger than King Bowser? Come on, that's impossible. Even Master Tubble Blubba has have some weak point. It's just common sense. Duh. Yeah, you may be right. There's another rumor that Tubble Blubba's got a secret that would ruin him if it ever got out. I bet it's about his past. I heard he didn't used to be strong at all. Shh, sh sh shut your beak, hadn't you hear me before? Stupid hammer, bro. What if Tubble Blubba hears you? Because, you know, he's 
absolutely in this castle, up in the sky, not down in the gulch place that we were just talking about. He might gobble us up, because we look so much like ghosts. Still, what do you think his secret could be anyway? I don't know. No one knows. That's why it's a secret, you halfwit. Oh, these guys are hysterical. Love them. Twink! It sounds like Tubble Blubba has a weak point after all. If only we can find out. Huh? Hey, did you hear someone talking just now? Sounded like some crazy reverb sound. <gasps> Gasp! Do you think someone knows we're goofing off in here? Uh-oh. Whoa, whoa, Princess Peach, how'd you get here? Uh, I'm sorry to do this, but you have to go back to your room right now. And rather than escort you, we're going to Koopa handle you. Whee! Oh no! But that's okay, because apparently these Koopa Troopers, just like all the other Koopa Troopers, leave the door open on their way out, which enables Twink to exit Steve Wright. Meanwhile, back in the dry, dry desert outside the dry, dry ruins... Thank you, Mario! At last, I can head home to Starhaven! My name is Mamar. So nice to meet you in person, Heart. You still got a long way to go, but I just know you can save Princess Peach. I'll do my best to help you, Heart. Here's a present for you. And with that, Mamara empowers us with uh, her power, which is great. And Mario's star energy goes up to two, which surprisingly enough, even just one extra one is extremely helpful, especially with the refresh ability. And now we get the new ability, Lullaby. And basically with this, you can make all enemies fall asleep. It's a chance to make them fall asleep. A higher chance than normal sleep things, but a very good chance nonetheless. Call on me when times are bad. Believe in this, Mario. My powers are strong. I'm a star spirit, after all. Mm-hmm. Our powers are growing all the time. Keep up the good work, Mario. You will save the other star spirits as soon as possible. For now, I'm going back to recover in Star Haven. Who knows how my dear old Star Haven is faring without the Star Rod. Goodbye, Mario. I'm off. Swirly heart. And just like uh, Eldstar, she rockets off to the sky, and here we are, back, woo, in Dry Dry Desert, in the Dry Dry Ruins. Now, there really isn't much more to do this. Um, I do have a few places I wish to go really quickly. Uh, let me avoid... Ah! Alright, these guys are only giving me one uh, star point apiece, so they're almost not even worth fighting. I am going to head quickly to Dry Dry uh, Outpost to check on something, and then I'm going to head to Colorado's camp, so... I will, if I find what I need to find in the outpost, I'll let you know. Otherwise that, oh, get away from me. Otherwise that, I'll see you at the camp. So here we go. Whee! All right, what I was looking for at the outpost wasn't there. I was trying to see if Chuck happened to come back. But we need to talk to Colorado really quickly before we finally leave the desert. Well, what ill luck. No clues about the ruins. I'm getting so frustrated, I just might give up the excavation for now. How very sad. I say... Mario, the artifact you hold in your hand. I don't know how I see it in your hand. It's probably in your very, very deep pockets. But that artifact that you happen to have on your person. It looks like it looks quite important. Do my eyes deceive me or is it that a clue to Dread Dread Ruins? Mario, old jum, old boy, old bugger, I beg of you. Could you possibly part with it? So remember that artifact that we found in the ruins behind the, the block and whatnot? Well, this is what we need to do. We need to hand it over to Mr. Colorado. And he is extremely excited to finally have something from the ruins, something that he can say is, you know, his, even though he didn't really find it, but it's an archaeological dream, you know, whatever. I don't really care. You take the little doll and give me my star piece. That was really what was important there. Uh, yes, you know, a bit of the magic of the desert. It's really not that much magic. It's just finding the proper map. And that's really it. Anywho, now that we did that, we are pretty much done in this area altogether. Let me, uh, just take back some of that. That's good. And we can now officially leave, uh, this area. I don't think there's really any reason for us to ever come back to Mount Rugged or Dry Dry Desert or anything like that. I'll be back at the outpost a few times, but that's for chuck hunting, which is something I'll show off a little later. Uh, remember I beat Buzzard, he's gone. We don't have to worry about him, her, it, whatever you want to call it. Poor Nest is up there. Hopefully the eggs have been properly, you know, taken care of. Avoid, 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 avoid. 
I really don't want to have to sit there and fight these guys, because at this point, Mario is a high enough level where they're either going to only give me one star point, or they're going to give me zero star points. Yeah, there is a possibility in this game, depending on how high Mario is, where you will go into a battle and actually receive no experience points whatsoever. It's probably one of my biggest complaints about Paper Mario 1, is that they force a cap upon you. Like I said, the highest level that Mario can get is level 27. So, as you proceed through the game, weaker enemies just don't give you any star points whatsoever. So, you're best just avoiding them or using those special badges that kill them in one hit. Wacka, come here! Yeah! Found out something about Wacka. He only gives you a certain amount of these Wacka bumps. I thought he just kept popping in and up, but I guess if they sold for 50 apiece and you could just come back and forth and grab and grab and grab, that would be way too much of an infinite money trick. So, I am going to fill up my inventory with Wacka's bumps and, uh, that's gonna pretty much be it. I'll show you what it looks like when we grab the last one. So hold on, let me go back and forth a few times. Oh, there we go. See, he exploded, he gave me some coins, and then that's it. Those are the last whack of bumps I can get. So I got these three, four, I wanna say I have two more uh, in inventory, two or three more, and I know I sold one. So I think Wacka gives you about uh, eight to ten bumps in total before he is completely gone for the remainder of the game. So. Are they worth 50 coins apiece, or are they worth the 25-25 recovery? You tell me, but I mean, I ended up selling one anyway, so... Whatever. Sucks to that. Stone block with our new fancy hammer, smash by, And behind it, so close, right in the beginning of the section, was a super block. Can you imagine that? It was right there, and we couldn't get it because we didn't have the proper hammer. Alright, let us upgrade another party member, and I choose to upgrade Cooper. I mean, it would have been nice if he was a little bit upgraded earlier, but his ground attack now becomes much stronger. And, I mean, his new ability that he learned from Super Rank isn't really... I don't know, I guess it's alright if you like the status elements of it all. But he gets Dizzy Shell, Daze and Paralyzes all enemies on the ground. Of course, this is all a chance. It's a chance to help paralyze him, it's a high chance, but... And, of course, it is just anything on the ground. So, flying enemies are Cooper's bane. He cannot do anything with them. Alright, so I think that's it. Like I said, I got the seed. That was important for a later chapter. I got the Wacka's Bumps. Ooh, I'm gonna grab, um, right here in this one. There we go, an egg. Just so I can start collecting stuff for, uh, Taste Tea's recipes a little bit later. Which, I am going to go over something with that in a little bit. So let me all aboard the station, or the train at the station, and make our way back to Toad Town. Here we go. And go! Chugga, 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 woo -hoo! Star potions, woo! Or whatever, I don't know. Alright, that was easy. I just had to hit the button and actually skip the scene. You don't have to watch the entire... And I don't even think there is an entire thing. It's just like an endless loop of a uh, train track in order to get back to Toad Town. So while we're here, I guess I can talk about a few other things. Uh, nothing important right there for right now, but I can talk about these little oink thingies. Heading up over here, I can get this toad to come up to me and he goes, I love little oinks. Love them. You, you want to learn about them? Yeah, sure, why not? I got time. Little oinks are timid and mysterious creatures that hatch from eggs. They spook easily and will run away if you approach them. Observe them from out here. There are many breeds of little oinks. They're very easy to tell apart. White ones, black ones, even gold and silver ones. If you're curious about the breed of a newborn little oink, come over and talk to me. I wish the world were full of little oinks. That would be grand. So the way this works is it costs 10 coins to make a little oink. You're going to come up here and you're going to jump. And it's going to produce an oink egg, which is really, really odd. Alright, and then you're going to come up here and we're going to whack it. And we've made a little oink. You can go up to Toad here and he can tell you about it. It's a white little oink, so pale and dainty. And he's going to be just kind of wandering around there, just doing his thing and whatnot. So, I'll make one more just to kind of show you the different varieties that you could possibly get. There's a lot of different varieties of these little oinks. And you never know what you're going to get until you go pop it with the hammer. Kind of like those uh, quarter machines that you find in the supermarket. Oh, look at him. He's all shiny. Disc Is this a disco oink? Is that his name? Oh, wow. It's a silver little oink. Look at that silver hide glittering in the sunshine. What a uh, gorgeous creature. Okay, so the way this works then is this pen can hold up to 10 of these little oinks. So that's 100 coins. You would then pay 10 more coins, so 110 in total, to make an 11th little oink. After that, the gate in the back opens up. All the little oinks make a break for it. The pen is empty and you get one freaking item. That's it. 
For 110 coins, you get one item. The, the items in here aren't that bad. They're pretty good. I think you can get ultra shrooms and jam and jellies and like uh, a lot of really strong, uh, good, good items. But it's all a chance. It's all random. There's no guarantee about what you're going to get. So are you going to be willing to spend 110 coins every time in order to do it? And then, if anything, you'd just be looking at all the little oinks. They are so cute. And they come in very weird varieties. But that is the entire purpose of the oink thing. I may do it in order to try and find extra items for the taste tea recipes. But I probably won't need to. Um, no, I don't need to go there. I need to go up this way. I will be doing taste tea momentarily. But first things first, let us... Um, you know what? Yeah, let's go here. Opening up, we got a bunch of badges that we can buy. Check out his supply. What do we got? We got double dip during battle, lets you use two items during one turn. Extremely helpful. Dodge Master makes the action command work, work more frequently. It's basically a larger range of error, or a smaller range of error they have for the Dodge Master. So this means if I'm late or early hitting the A button, now I may be on time because of Dodge Master. It, it's something I should equip because, as you can probably tell, I'm not that great at the action command, and at least it'll help me. And then Sleep Stomp. If you want to go for a status effect Mario abilities, this is basically a jump attack that has a chance of putting the enemy to sleep. So let's grab the Double Dip. I won't be equipping any of these at the moment, but I am going to take them for hmm, collection purposes. Plus, our good badge dealer here uh, has a certain amount of badges that he will carry between all the levels and whatnot, so you can actually sell him out of stuff and then just wait until the next chapter to open up for him to have better items. So let's see, here we go. We need to go to... We need to go to the, uh, the Murr house, which is up over this way. Uh, not the one... Well, it is the same house, technically, that we are collecting the star pieces for. But it's the lower level instead of the upper level, because I don't have enough star pieces yet to go and collect the badge that I wish to have, uh, as my first trade. And that would be the power badge, because I like giving me Mario extra power. No, what's in this bottom floor is that other chest that Peach was talking about. Opening it up, inside is the Power Rush Badge. Woo! New badge again. And the Deep Focus Badge. Awesome. Look at that. We got five brand new badges in one shot. And I don't have nearly enough badge points in order to be able to do everything I want with them. Alright, so with that said and done, we've gone uh, several screens out. I bet you the badge guy has restocked in whatever it is he has left, and I would like to buy his remaining items. So let's see down here. Let's go. Ooh, I wonder if Chuck's here. Chuck? Any Chuck? No Chuck. Chuck will usually appear up there by the tree. He'll appear in other areas of town as well. Open, and yep, yeah, there you go. His last two badges. Multi-bounce. Jump on all enemies in a row. If action command is timed right. So it's basically an all-hitting uh, bounce attack. Just your standard bounce strength. No additional uh, power to it, but it, again, is an all-hitting attack, so we like those AoEs. And first attack. Let's Mario destroy a weaker enemy with a first strike. I think I showed this off earlier, but, uh, well, I didn't show it off. I showed you that he was carrying it earlier, but as long as Mario is a higher level than the enemy, and this is equipped, if I smack them, they instantly get destroyed, and I don't have to worry about fighting them. Uh, next thing I'm going to go is I will be right back, because I'm going to head into Taste Tea's, uh, really... What, what do I got in, like, coin-wise? You know what? I can just show it really quickly. Hold on. I'm going to go to Tea. I'm going to go grab something from the item shop, and then I'm going to come back into Taste Tea, and I'm going to show you guys a little trick. So hold on one second. This was actually mentioned in the comment section uh, in previous videos, but I figured I'd just show you guys exactly what was talked about. I went and I bought a Volt Shroom. It's actually in the item shop to the left of the screen that I'm in right now. I haven't really showed off that section, but he sells Volt Shrooms. Volt Shrooms are sold for 10 coins apiece, so fill up your inventory with 10 Volt Shrooms. What you then want to do is you want to come over to Taste Tea, and you want to give her the Volt Shroom itself. She is going to go, and she is going to make an item out of the Volt Room, which is very new, and I might as well do it anyway, because it is a new recipe for our Taste Tea uh, guide, per se. And she gives us the Hot Room. Now, Volt Rooms are bought for 10. Hot Rooms are then sold for 15, so that's a 5-coin profit. I did this. That's exactly what it is. You buy the Volt Rooms for 10, you sell them for 15. It may not seem like a lot, considering you can only have 10 items in your inventory at once. You're only getting like a 50 coin profit at this point, but if you've seen the cost of the badges, I mean, they're only they're like 50 to 100 
coins, and so a few times doing this, basically it's an infinite coin trick. So long as you have the coin in order to fill up your inventory with a ton of Voltrums, you can then go and continuously sell them and keep building up your coin supply without having to really do much of anything. It takes a while, it's a lot of back and forth and a lot of waiting for Tasty to cook and whatnot, but for at this point in the game, or at least for the next few levels, that's actually the best way to get coins if you have, uh, if you have them to burn. Uh, da, 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 and nothing there. Yeah, this is also something you want to do. You want to make sure he is continuously sold out, so this way you have the best badges you possibly can get at that point in the game. Last but not least, in this episode of Intermission Glory, we are going to head home. And by home, I mean back down through this pipe and to where we literally began the game. Hey, it's Luigi! What is he doing? He's sitting there all singing-like and whatnot. I wonder what my brother Mario is doing right now. Oh, what is this? Oh, the pipe, it went crazy. Mario, it's you! Ah, good to see you! Yahoo! And you're all right! After all, that castle craziness, I was really worried about you! I ran outside just as the earthquake started, so I managed to escape in time. I was by myself, didn't really help anybody, but I was still good, I'm okay, Mario, it's okay. Who the hell is this? Who are you bringing in here, Mario? Oh, and who are you? You're Luigi, right? My name's Cooper. Pleasure to meet you. I see. Great, just great, you little pudgy bastard. You're on an exciting adventure with Mario. Talk about unfair. See, someone has to look after this house, so I can't leave. No one's expecting Mario to pick up a broom now and then, now are they? <sighs> oh well, take care of Mario, okay? And that's pretty much it. Poor Luigi is stuck here looking after our house like the maid that he is because his name isn't even on the house. He gets no mail, he gets no love, he gets no respect. And I feel so sad for Luigi. Aww. Also, I like looking around back here because they have pipes just chilling back there. They don't go anywhere, they're not warp pipes, but just in case you need to make a warp pipe, there you go. This is Mario Maker before it even ever came out. Anything in here? No? Okay. Uh, inside of Mario and Luigi's house, though, is a board to the back, and this is our stats. This is the thing that I'm kind of going off of in terms of trying to get 100% completion. So as you can see, there's the badge count, there's my current star piece count, Tasty's recipes, Chuck Quizmo's quizzes. Um, the, uh, the last few stats are just kind of your own personal thing. The last question mark is a special badge that keeps jumping up and down on a character. I want to say it's power bounce or something like that, but I haven't used it yet. And all it does is just keep track of how many bounces in a row you were managed to hit. It doesn't mean anything, but it's the first few that are the ones that I care about. Um, Chuck Quizmo's quizzes, that stat can be really weird. If you don't answer a quiz correctly, the number still goes up. So by the end of the game, if you answer every quiz correctly in order, you should be 64 or 64. But say you get three questions wrong, but then by the end of the game, you end up answering all those questions, the stat will say 64 of 67. So I'm going to try to keep it at 64, 64 this entire time because I would rather have a nice even playthrough and whatnot. But that's all we're going to do for today. In the next episode, we're going to move on with the next chapter. We're going to figure out what exactly this tubba blubba thing is and go rescue the next star spirit, which apparently made a great escape from the castle. So it's hunting time. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to rate and comment down below. And if you haven't already hit that subscribe button so you can get equipped with me, Metal Blade 427. Until next time, everyone, you have a good one. And I will catch you all later.